Us guitar players have been known, especially in the age of the internet, to maybe get caught up in the hype. People think that you have to spend a ton of money to get a really great overdrive tone. No, I'm not gonna claim that I'm guilty or not guilty of such behavior, uh, but the reality is that's not true. You don't have to have an overdrive pedal that was made on the other end of the world with unicorn tears to have great overdrive sound. In fact, this is one of the few things in life where the adage of you get what you pay for, I think doesn't apply. There are some budget overdrives, overdrive pedals that are under $100 that are truly phenomenal. And in today's video, I'm gonna prove that. We're gonna talk about six pedals that are all under $100 that are great, absolutely usable, pedals that I would 100% throw on any one of my pedal boards right now and go play a gig with. Now to do this subject justice, I enlisted the help of my friend Zach Broyles. Zach is a pedal designer and builder. He owns Mythos Pedals. He and I have a podcast together called Dipped in Tone that we've been doing for the last year. You can check that out in the description box down below. And Zach really knows his stuff when it comes to analog overdrive circuits. So huge thanks to him for coming out. And I need to briefly thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Sweetwater. Now, if you follow this channel at all, you know I typically don't do sponsored videos like this, but just in the effort of transparency, my wife and I are buying a house and we've got some pretty big bills coming up in the next month or so. Uh, so here's thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. So I've actually been using Sweetwater for years. Before I ever had a YouTube channel or anything, they were pretty much my go-to online resource when I was buying gear to use on gigs and on the road. And since moving into doing YouTube uh, full-time, my sales engineer, shout out to Drew Foster, they've been super helpful in getting me the gear that I need to make this YouTube channel and videos like this possible. They provided the six pedals we're using today, and I'm giving all six of these pedals away. Way. If you follow the link in the description box down below, you can enter to win. Contest is going to run for about a month. It's free to enter. Just click the link down below and you could walk away with one of these six overdrives. They have free shipping on all orders with no minimum order. They have a two-year warranty on nearly every purchase. And for us guitar players, if you're buying a guitar that is worth more than $300, they pull that guitar out and do a 55-point inspection on it. So you can be sure that if you're buying a guitar from Sweetwater, you're not going to get something that is a dud out of the box. It's going to be gone through, taken care of. And for certain guitars, they have super detailed pictures. So you can pick out things like your preferred wood grain or anything like that. So huge thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring today's video. You can find out more information about them in the description box down below, as well as links to every one of the pedals that I'm using in today's video. Those are affiliate links, which means if you buy something through one of those links, it helps support this channel. And I thank you. Now let's jump in and take a look at the pedals we're going to be using today. Before we do though, my signal chain. I'm using the Amp Nation Amplifonics and Gain. This is a two-channel 6L6 50-watt all tube amplifier and it's a really great pedal platform amp the clean channel takes pedals really well and it has a lot of onboard gain on tap that's important because a lot of these pedals work great as boosts in front of amps that are already overdriven and you're going to hear that in today's video i'm going out of that amp into my torpedo captor x from two notes and then into luna so with all that out of the way let's jump in and take a look at the first pedal The first pedal we're going to take a look at today is the Boss OD3. Now, technically, this isn't under $100. It actually retails for $102.99, but I feel like we can forgive three bucks for the Boss. The OD3 is basically the evolution of everything Boss had been doing up until the mid 90s. And essentially, it's a bunch of cascading amplifier circuits. So there's a bunch of hard clipping that happens in that circuit, which some people like, some people don't like. It's totally different than any Tube Screamer, than any other, the SD-1. It's not a clone of anything, and most things aren't derivative of this. It's kind of its own animal. 
Now this pedal is a total sleeper and it actually does a few things really, really well. Uh, first thing is it works great as a normal overdrive. If you're playing in front of a clean amp, there's a lot of gain on tap. It can revoice the amp. It's not transparent really, but it will revoice your amp and kind of give you a nice mid focused, smooth overdrive sound that's really nice. <laughs> But one of my favorite things to do with the OD3 is to bring the gain down and boost the volume going into the front of the amp and use it as just a straight ahead boost pedal. You're not gonna find another circuit kind of like that because of the, it's got cascading transistor amplifier stages that goes into an op amp, passive tone circuit, input output buffers, pretty, you know, standard boss stuff, but not something you see in, in other overdrives typically, at least not in the boutique game anyway. <laughs> Next up, we've got the plumes from Earthquaker Devices. Now, this is a tube screamer. And if you know anything about me in this channel, you know that I actually don't like tube screamers. On the list of my favorite overdrives, the tube screamer is not anywhere near the top. In fact, it's probably not even on the list. But I feel like you can't have a video talking about most popular best overdrives without talking about some kind of tube screamer circuit. And I think for the money, the plumes is sort of the best bang for your buck. The plumes is... Jamie and company's attempt to modify the Tube Screamer. Classic controls, level, tone, and gain. I don't think they changed anything so far as the function of those. I'm sure they tweaked the values. But the big appeal is having a clipping switch. So in one position, the third position, you have asymmetrical silicon diode clipping, which means it has an uneven number of diodes. So probably three, five, etc. number of diodes to clip the wave waveform unevenly. The second position is no clipping, so all you're getting is the overdrive from the op amp itself. And then the first mode is symmetrical LED clipping, which uses two LEDs. LEDs, when used as clipping diodes, they have a lot of volume, and some people say it has a tube-like feel, and, and they kind of compress, and you can feel it under your fingers when you really crank the gain. LEDs have a nice feel, but for all intents and purposes, the Plumes is a classic TS-style circuit. <laughs> That feature makes this pedal really, really versatile. It'll work with a wider range of guitars and amp combinations than just a normal tube screamer will. To me, if you're playing a Strat into some kind of blackface Fender style amp, a tube screamer is great. But if you're using it for anything else, a humbucker guitar into just about any other type of amplifier, I don't like the tube screamer. But with this little switch in the middle, it changes the clipping diodes around, the clipping circuit around to give you some more options. And I think for $100, 
that is a nice feature. Another nice little detail that I like about the plumes is it has a soft touch switch on it. So you don't get the hard ka-chunk of a normal switch. It's a subtle feature. Most people don't care about it, but I like it. So the plumes makes the list. <laughs> Next up is the Hot Tubes Nano from Electro Harmonics. This is a really cool pedal, and actually, I think of the whole shootout today, this one's probably my favorite. Um, it's actually doing something pretty different from any of the other pedals in the shootout. The Hot Tubes is a circuit that I don't feel like anyone talks about, but it's been around a long time. It has a op amp stage at the beginning that's not too dissimilar from like a screamer or something. It uses a 4558, has both of those amplifiers in that first section, but no diodes. And what you have after that is stacked gain stages from a CD4049 UBE chip. That's the Red Llama chip. Basically what it is, is a hex inverter. It's a computer chip that has a bunch of amplifiers in it. And what this circuit is doing is just slamming into amplifiers over and over and over to create the gain. It has a tone circuit that's pretty unique that you can switch on and off. But apart from that, it has that Red Llama kind of crunchy feel, but there's more there because of it's using more of the chip. And it has that boost stage in the beginning that, that controls. That's where the, the gain knob is. It's right after that first stage. And so it's slamming into everything after that. It's a really unique circuit and sounds pretty cool. Now, I like the hot tubes for a few reasons. First of all, if you back this overdrive control off, you actually get a really nice, thick, clean boost. And going into the front of an amp that is already overdriven, I think that's a really, really useful feature. And the fact that you can bypass the tone control and revoice the type of boost or the type of gain that you're getting is really awesome. So overall, this is a unique overdrive. It does a cool thing. It works with a wide variety of guitars and amps. And I think it's something to check out if you're into that beefy, hard overdrive sound. <laughs> Next up on our list is the JHS 3 Series Overdrive. Now, Josh and his team dropped a whole series of these $100 pedals last year. This is the Overdrive from the series. And this pedal is actually really interesting. Um, Zach or I did not know the history or the circuit topology behind this pedal. So I reached out to Josh and he actually told me the story of where this design comes from. It's not a clone of a Tube Screamer or any other normal type of overdrive pedal that you might think. It's actually a modified clone of an HAO Rumble Mod. Now, 
HAO was a Japanese boutique brand from the 90s, and the Rumble Mod was the owner Toshi's take on a Dumble that he owned. And Josh got to know Toshi over the years, and with permission from Toshi, because the Rumble Mod's not made anymore, he essentially cloned it with a few tweaks and put it in this $99 overdrive pedal. So what you get is a pedal that can do the sort of dumble in a box thing, but it's also really versatile. clean boost, works well with a wide variety of guitars in front of a wide variety of different amps. If you're looking for a first overdrive to get something that's going to cover a wide gamut of sounds, I would probably recommend the 3 Series. I mean, realistically, any of the pedals on this list would be good options, but I really like this one. <laughs> Crayon from Electro Harmonics. The Crayon, so far as I understand, is a clone of the BB preamp from Exotic. That circuit is a soft clip circuit, kind of like a Tube Screamer, but where that circuit differs is it has a back sandal tone stack. So a back sandal tone stack has a separate treble and bass control where in the middle it's basically neutral and then you can add or cut frequencies depending on where you turn the pedal up or down. I think on the exotic pedal it has a detent in the middle so you can kind of find center and then move from there. But apart from that, it's a pretty classic configuration, soft clipping, gain control in the first op amp stage, just like a tube screamer, but that tone stack is where you get way more control in a total different variety of sounds. The BB preamp is actually one of the first overdrive pedals I ever purchased 10 plus years ago when I was first getting into pedals. And I had that pedal for years and I sold it on because at the time I couldn't afford to buy a different pedal without selling the pedals that I had. And I wish I hadn't have done it because I loved the BB preamp. Now, if you're after that sort of tube screamer sort of thing, this isn't a tube screamer, but it can do that kind of sound. I would go with this over just about any tube screamer out there because it's more versatile. It sounds better in my opinion, and it works with a wider variety of guitars and amps than your normal tube screamer circuit does, uh, plumes excluded. <laughs> Plenty of gain on tap, it cleans up really well. It can be a clean boost, it can be an amp in a box, it can be a light to medium gain overdrive. The crayon's worth checking out. Finally, let's take a look at the Blues Driver from Boss. So the, the Blues Driver, the BD2, is a JFET style overdrive. Basically, in the pedal community, instead of using a preamp tube, you can sub that using a JFET, where you use a little transistor to represent both sides of a 12AX7. The BD2 has kind of an amp-like structure. It's hard clipped. The name doesn't represent exactly what the pedal does. It has a lot of gain. It does way more than just, you know, light overdrive, which the name would make you think. <laughs> Now, 
Now, like the OD3, the Blues Driver BD2 is a classic pedal, and you kind of can't talk about $100 overdrives without including this in the list. If you're a John Mayer fan, specifically Continuum era John Mayer, you should get this pedal. In fact, uh, this pedal was used all over Continuum, as well as the, the Tri record uh, that came out before Continuum. Now, his was a Keeley modded blues driver, but if you have a Strat and you have a Fender and you like those John Mayer tones, you cannot pass up on this pedal. So those are six budget overdrive pedals that absolutely do not suck. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Like I said, you can find out more information about the pedals used today in the links down below. Those are affiliate links. So if you buy something, I earn a small commission, which really helps me out. Huge thanks to my friend, Zach Broyles. Don't forget to check out our podcast, Dipped in Tone. It goes up every Tuesday on YouTube and wherever you download podcasts. We have a ton of fun over there. And if you're interested, you can check out my video courses down below, the Tone course and the Nashville Number System course. We're currently running 20% off of all the video courses. So check that out down below if you're interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Rhett Schull and remember there is no plan B.